This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Good morning and welcome to Squiz Kids, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Tuesday, February 9. In Squiz Kids today, heroes at the Australian Open, ice skating Amsterdam's canals, old man stars at Super Bowl, and puppies play footy. That's what's making news, kids style. The Lowdown. If you find yourself watching the Australian Open Tennis Tournament at any time in the next couple of weeks, and there's a good chance you will, keep an ear out for Hawkeye, the robot camera system they've brought in to replace the lines people. Usually at a tennis tournament, lines people will stand at either end of the court and call out whether a ball is in or out. But with COVID and restrictions on the number of people allowed on the court at any one time, Hawkeye is doing that job this year. And, in a clever little twist, the organisers of the Australian Open have programmed Hawkeye to speak with the voice of a handful of Aussie heroes. Frontline emergency service workers, like a paramedic from Victoria, which is a person who drives an ambulance and offers medical help at accidents and also a surf lifesaver from Queensland, and an SES volunteer who saves people caught in floodwaters. All of them have lent their voices to Hawkeye, which is a really clever way to honour the excellent and often unrecognised work that emergency workers do. Can I get a hearty Squiz Kids hurrah? Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in the Netherlands, where a massive snowstorm and sub-zero temperatures have meant the good people of Amsterdam are able to ice skate on the canals. Amsterdam is a big city in the Netherlands, renowned for being built on a series of canals. Usually the canals have boats going up and down them, but with the cold snap, Amsterdammers have been able to dust off their skates and hit the canals. The last time this happened was in 2018. And because I know you want to see it, I've stuck a link in today's episode notes from that last freezing time. Sport time! At 43 years old, he's practically a pensioner in the world of American football. But Tampa Bay Buccaneers halfback Tom Brady entered sporting history books yesterday, helping his team to a Super Bowl victory and securing for himself a record-breaking seventh title. The Super Bowl is the grand final of the NFL football season in America. And while most people come for the footy, the halftime entertainment is usually just as spectacular. Yesterday's performance by The weekend was no exception. The singer's medley of hit tunes performed with the backing of a stage full of COVID-safe dancers hit all the right notes. I've stuck a link to it in today's episode notes. And if you're pressed for time, fast forward to the 10-minute mark when he launches into a performance of his chart-topping song, Blinding Lights. It's epic. Sport time! Yeah, you heard right. We're back for another dose of sport because yesterday was just so jam-packed. The Australian Open Tennis Tournament kicked off in Melbourne yesterday with a big crowd of 30,000 spectators braving coolish temperatures to watch the first batch of first-round matches get underway. That's 5,000 more spectators than even the Super Bowl was allowed to have. One of the highlights from the day, apart from the tennis, which saw top-seeded women Serena Williams and Naomi Osaka cruise into the second round, was Williams' eye-catching one-legged lycra cat suit, which the champ said had been inspired by one-time track and field superstar Flojo, also known as Florence Griffith Joyner, who used to run races in a similar get-up. There's a link to Serena's winning outfit in today's episode notes, as well as a link to an awesome Flojo gallery for perspective. Animal Kingdom 
We promised yesterday that if we found any video of the Puppy Bowl, we'd bring it to you. Well, the gods have smiled, and peak cuteness is upon you, dear listeners, because not only has video surfaced, but also details as well. The Puppy Bowl, if you missed yesterday's edition, is the Super Bowl for puppies. It's a televised event in which two teams of rescue puppies play with toys and one another on a miniature football field. It goes to air in America before the Super Bowl. It involves 70 puppies and each one is adopted out by a viewer at the end of the broadcast. It's genius. The winning team yesterday was Team Rough beating Team Fluff by 73 points to 69. The link to the video, of course, is in today's episode notes. And yes, you're welcome. Did you know that Squiz Kids has just celebrated its first birthday? And like every one-year-old, we're in a hurry to grow up. We've got big plans for the year ahead, but... To make sure we grow in a way that works best for you, we've launched a survey for parents, carers and teachers to find out how you use Squiz Kids and what you'd most like to see from us that would make it bigger and better. There's a link to the survey in today's episode notes. Please take a moment to fill out the survey. It only takes a couple of minutes and I'd really appreciate it. Time for the Quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What's the name of the city in the Netherlands where people are ice skating on frozen canals? That's right, it's Amsterdam. Question number two. Which team won this year's Super Bowl? Yeah, it was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Question number three. Name the singer who wowed with the Super Bowl's halftime entertainment. You got it. It was The Weeknd. Shout outs. It's February 9. Birthday of actors Tom Hiddleston, better known as Loki from the Thor movies and Michael B. Jordan of Black Panther fame. It's also a special day for these Squiz kids celebrating a birthday today. Lucas from Adelaide, Sophie from Morpeth, Jackson from Oran Park, Ben from New Gisborne, Yulani from Abbotsford, and Lawson from DY. And some belated birthday shout-outs to Cooper from Marshall, Lincoln from Narrowena, Florence from Abbotsford, Aria from Chipping Norton and Connor from Listerfield. And remember yesterday we talked about Squiz Kid Millie, who's in quarantine with her mum in a hotel in China? And she asked if any of you might have some bright ideas on how to pass the time. Well, it turns out you do have bright ideas. Senior H at St Bridget's Primary School wrote in to suggest origami, paper planes, build a fort or dress up as a ghost as potential hotel quarantine activities. Nice work, St Bridget's. And Grade 6 from St Mary's Catholic Primary School in Mansfield came up with some clever ideas too, including travel the world using Google Maps, search up random facts, read a book, build a fort, make a recipe book, write a book, bounce a ball against the wall, though that one might annoy your mum and your neighbours, And my personal favourite, watch TV and sleep. There you go, Millie. We hope that helps. Be sure to write and let us know which ones worked out best. And today's classroom shout-outs go to Class 3-4-D at Range Bank Primary School, Class 5-6-D and Mrs Dutry at Heaney Park Primary School, Class 1-2-B and 3-4-P at Geraldton Grammar School, and Mrs Place's 5-P class at St Francis Xavier Primary School. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out, or if you're after a classroom shout-out, Drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. Squiz Kids is proudly supported by the Judith Nielsen Institute for Journalism and Ideas.
Squeeze Squeeze Kids. It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh.